In this video, you'll learn how to create an SVG from scratch. I'll explain step by step how to create this cute coffee cup character using the basic shapes and the pen tool. So let's begin. I'll start my project by setting up the color for my background. I already have the color code in my clipboard, so I'll just paste it right here. Next, I need to turn on the grid on my canvas for more precision when drawing and the snap to grid option enabled as well. I'll just create more room on my stage by reducing the height of the timeline and zoom in on the canvas a little. Now, let's start drawing the coffee cup right here in the center. To do so, I need to select the ellipse from the Shapes menu and start drawing it from the center, while holding down on the Alt key and also the Shift key to be able to obtain a perfect circle. Now from the Shapes menu, I'll select the rectangle and I want to make it the same width as the circle. The Snap to Grid option comes in very handy for this and I can draw the rectangle precisely. The width and height can also be changed from those inputs, here. I will only change the height to 120 pixels for now. Now I have a circle and a rounded rectangle, which I will use to create the shape of the coffee cup by uniting them. I have to drag the rectangle to partially cover the circle. It will snap to the median line of the circle, but for seamless edges in the final shape, I'll bring it down by two more grid units. There. With both of them selected, I'll go here to the Boolean options and choose Union. This will merge the circle and the rectangle into a new single shape. Now in the Appearance panel, I'll set the fill to white for better contrast with my yellow background. Great! We have completed the first step, creating the body of the coffee cup character. To keep things clear and organized, I'll double-click on the element here and rename it to Body and press Enter. Now I'll go ahead and create the face of the character, starting with the eyes. So I'll create a new ellipse, which I'll draw right here. This time without holding down Alt or Shift, because I don't need it to be a perfect circle. I want to change its size, the width to 5 pixels by 10 pixels high, and also set its fill color to black. Now I'll select the Transform tool and make sure the origin is centered by clicking on the Center Origin button here. For the second eye, I'm simply going to copy and paste this small ellipse. Right click on it and choose Copy. Then right click again and paste. Now I just have to drag the copy away a little, just like this. To make sure you move it perfectly horizontally, hold down Shift while dragging it. Now that we're done with the eyes, let's bring a smile on the face of our little friend here. For that, I'll need the pen tool, which I will use to draw a curved line. I'll start with the first point here, below the left eye, by clicking and holding. Then I release the click after I place the Bezier handle one grid unit under the starting point. Now I'll go two more grid units to the left to place the second point. Click and hold again while dragging the Bezier handle up one grid unit. Press A on your keyboard to switch to the Node tool so that you can edit the nodes and beziers. Now I'll do some minor adjustments to the line by moving the bezier handle's three grid units horizontally towards the center of the path to make the smile look more uniform. I want to make the line the same color as the eyes, so I'll go to the stroke color here and choose black. Also, I want to have it with rounded ends, so I'll click here on this icon. You can also click on the rounded joins if you want and set the stroke width to 4 pixels. OK, now let's adjust its position a little. There. I'll now make the cheeks. Of course, I'll use the ellipse tool again to create a circle right here and set the fill color to pink. To create a copy, you can also use the keys Control or Command D on your keyboard and you'll create a duplicate of the selected object, just like this. I'll drag it now to the other side of the face and make sure that they are perfectly aligned horizontally. Actually, I want those cheeks moved up a little. I'll just disable the snap to grid real quick and move them up uh, half a grid unit. I want to create a group with all the face elements, so for that I'm going to select them from the elements list, right click, and group. Then double click on the group and name it Face. Great! So now we have the body and face of our coffee cup character. Next, I'll continue with the legs. 
For that, I'll use the pen tool to draw a simple leg. I'm holding down the shift key to make sure my line is perfectly vertical or horizontal. And done. Now I'll just set its stroke color to black, enable the rounded ends and joints, and set the stroke width to five pixels. I'll create a copy of this path for the second leg, which I'll flip horizontally by clicking this button here. I need the legs to be behind the body, so with both of them selected, I'll drag them down in the elements list, right below my body element. Let's rename them real quick. Left leg and right leg. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and make the arms. I'll need the pen tool again to draw a curved path for the arm. And also another line for the hand here. It kind of looks like a twig, but that's all right because I want to keep a minimalistic style. With both of the paths selected, I'll apply the same stroke settings as for the legs. Black color, roundness, and five pixels for the stroke width. I'll now group them and name the group right arm. For the left arm, I'll just copy and paste it. And of course, rename it accordingly, left arm. Flip it horizontally and place it on the left. I need to place this arm behind, so I'll drag it under the body element. There. Let's create a shadow underneath our character. That will be another ellipse with a size of 200 by 30 pixels. Set a desaturated orange for the fill color. Place it last in the elements list and name it Shadow. I think it's a little too wide, so I'll go to the Transform Properties and scale it down on the x-axis to 0.9, which is the same as 90%. Next, I'll draw the handle, which will be a circle of 80 by 80 pixels. I don't need any fill color for it, so I'll just set it to none, but instead I need the stroke to be white, and also thicker. 26 pixels will be fine. I just need to place it now in the right spot. And bring it behind the body element. All that's left now is to draw some coffee splashes. And again, I'll use the ellipse tool to draw a circle, of course, while holding down the shift key. Okay. Then create a copy of it, which I'll choose a different color for so I can distinguish it. Now with both of them selected, I'll use the subtract option to make a cut in the first circle using the second one, like this. And I'll also make it black before going any further. Now I need to round up those pointy parts. For that, I'll grab the node tool from the tools menu and select these two nodes then click on the fourth asymmetric node type here. Notice how the Bezier's changed, allowing me to edit the shape easily and get a more organic aspect for it. I'll do some adjustments here, moving the nodes and tweaking the Bezier's until this shape will look like coffee sloshing inside the cup. Working a little on the Bezier's of the middle node too, trying to keep it uniform and symmetric. There, this is good enough. Bring it down a little. I'll name the shape Coffee. And place it behind the body element. Actually, let's hide it entirely behind the cup. Now I want to place the origin point center top. Oh, let me disable the snap to grid. There.
The element will always rotate around its origin point, and placing it center top will help in the animation process. We're almost done. The last thing I want to add is a drop of coffee right next to the splash I just drew. I'll simply create another circle, color it black, and place its origin point at the same position as the origin of the splash so it can be rotated the same. That's it! This is how you create a character in SVJDR. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how simple it is to animate it and bring this coffee cup to life.